Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, Patrick here, and uh, this video is going to be slightly different than uh, the other videos on my channel. This is going to probably be a series going uh, on and off throughout the whole season. It's going to be kind of the uh, tournament vlog and the um, practice round vlog or casual round vlog, where I kind of go over um, some of the stuff that I'm doing during the round, where where I need to improve and where I need to, you know, um, kind of pay attention a little bit more to how I'm reacting to certain situations. Uh, maybe a different disc choice or something like that. Uh, this first video is, uh, this is the first video of the series, so it's kind of uh, a tester. Uh, do me a favor, if you like this type of content, please hit that like button. Uh, also, don't forget, uh, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and then go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know when I upload my next round. Um, probably more so during my casual rounds, I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe film a little bit more of me playing through that round versus a tournament round, um, kind of by myself, so that way it's a little bit harder to film during a tournament round, but a lot easier to film during a casual round. So. Uh, those will probably be a little bit more in depth. I mean, if I get a caddy or something uh, during my tournament rounds, and I could probably uh, film those as well. But uh, this one's going to be uh, OPC. This is uh, not school to Iowa. It's the first, uh, my first sanctioned tournament of the year. Uh, I had some nerves kind of going into it, um, just because it's uh, the first one, and it's uh, something I kind of always have to kind of get over as as the season goes on and it happens every season. And it's part of the reason why I keep coming back to the season because I'm still nervous. I'm still enjoying my rounds. I'm still enjoying the tournaments regardless of the mental game that I have going on or regardless of my skill or even injuries. Uh, Oscar Luce is near and dear to my heart. It's, uh, the second tournament that I've thrown in when I first started my competitive disc golf career I took second in the rec division at that point, and uh, it kind of it's one of the ones that helped get me hooked onto competitive disc golf. So I always try to make a point or or attempt to at least make it back to Oskaloosa to kind of pay homage to that first tournament or that second tournament. Sorry, but. It's always a good time. It's been great to watch how TJ has grown the course and this tournament uh, through the last uh, few years. And then I've been able to witness this and see it. And he always puts on a great tournament. So it's, here's kind of a shout out to TJ Brown, who uh, hosts it, who runs it. Uh, he does a great job, him, his wife, and his mom. And uh, as always, I mean, they're, they're pretty great guy. Uh, he's a pretty great guy. And, you know, if you have an issue or whatever, if you, if you have questions about something, he's more than willing to help you um, and more than willing to answer those questions um, as they come at him. But uh, again, second tournament of, of my disc golf career, first tournament of the season this year. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into it. Um, maybe a little bit later on, maybe at the end of the video, I will explain what one round at a time and one throw at a time and i've actually been saying it backwards lately it's supposed to be one throw at a time one round at a time uh what it means to me and, and why i say it um and and everything else so uh again if you like this content hit that like button uh subscribe if you're new here hit that notification bell and you know let's go ahead and just say uh put a comment down below what was your second tournament or your first tournament what got you into competitive disc golf or what got you into disc golf and um you know how do you how do you handle the distractions and and what's your mental game like as you're going through a round? Um, yeah, sit back, enjoy. Um, we're gonna start off just as I get there, and uh, we'll see how it goes. One step at a time, one punch at a time, one round at a time. All right, guys, I'm here at uh, Oskaloosa, so. I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna practice. It was about a two hour drive, it rained the whole time. Uh, looks like it rained here. And the uh, you know course is a little soggy, but that's fine. Uh, real quick, this is just gonna be like a, a vlogging series. This is where I critically analyze my rounds, my throws, um, what I could do better, how I can improve, how I can learn from my um, mistakes to get better. So uh, I'll check in throughout the round. You probably will see me the, uh, you know, 
player meeting and stuff like that and uh we're gonna get on with it so have fun um i gotta remember one round at a time one throw at a time and one throw at a time one round at a time and uh yeah i will chit chat with you guys later Bye. Start, start on hole 11 today. Uh, looks like I might be the first card for intermediate, I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see what happens here. So I'll check in probably throughout the round, take a couple videos of me driving, maybe have somebody take a video of me putting, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'll check in here in uh, about nine holes. Bye. All right, nine holes in, and uh, right now, I know what I need to fix. Um, I'm reading the wind wrong and doing bad bad decisions on my disc selection, but uh, just had a nice jump putt, and it puts me at uh, even for the round. So, see you guys in uh, another nine holes. All right, guys, so uh, first round's done. I uh, shot a 60. Uh, it's not bad, seeing as how um, Course par is right now playing as a 57, I believe. Uh, that's with an extra hole at par three, everything. So 60 is not bad. Uh, hot round is for intermediate is 54. So and he was on my card. He actually uh, had some pretty good long putts that he made. That was uh, very, very uh, good. His name's Brent. Brett, uh, I believe. I'll have to re ask. I'll probably correct that later on on the next check in. But yeah, really good uh, round. The wind kind of picked up and I wasn't ready for it. So I needed to, I kind of started off with a little bit of uh, lighter discs and a little bit more understable discs, thinking I can really crush them and get the distance out of them. Uh, didn't really take into account the wind when I did, so that's kind of my fault. So it's part of the reason why I am at a 60. <laughs> and uh, I left a few putts short or in, in too long. so. Next round, I know what I'm gonna do. I know what holes I'm gonna attack and that I can attack and ones that I need to play smart on and uh, you know, make sure to try to make that move up to at least first or you know, at least uh, within the top. I'd like to say, I'd like to be within the top four today. Otherwise, um, yeah, I will check in. I'm gonna probably put the picture up right after I'm done talking here about what the second round looks like what hole I'm starting on and uh, you know the first you know where I'm sitting at so all right until then I will talk to you guys later bye all right so nine holes in again and uh Second round's a little bit more painful. I uh, cleaned up holes that I messed up on the first round, but made mistakes on holes, you know, that I did on the last round. So keep plugging away. One throw at a time, one, one round at a time. Even though I tried to clean up a few strokes, and on the check-in I did a, uh, I, I told you kinda, uh, I was not doing so well. Um, I cleaned up strokes on the holes I needed to clean up strokes on the first round, but I also took strokes on the holes that I shouldn't have. And uh, that's 
pretty much my fault, of course, and I can't blame anybody else but me. Um, would have cashed out, would have been last cash, if I didn't let a disturbance get into my head. Uh, somebody cussed behind me while I was getting ready to putt. So I backed off and reset, and then uh, went to go do it again. And just as I was about ready to hit my pop, he cussed again, and it threw me off. And this is just going to show that, you know, even I, you know, even though I have this mantra of one throw at a time, one round at a time, that I, uh, I even sometimes fail to do that as well. And I let it get, get in my head and it cost me uh, not only a, a birdie, but it, it, I took a four on that hole and then I took a four on the next hole because I was still kind of irritated by it. Uh, again, this is just, it, it's my reaction to it and I should be able to control that, but that's, uh, that's it. So, anywho, I got a long drive home. It looks like it's about ready to rain. Uh, I threw, uh, 60 the first round, you'll see, and then, uh, 63 the second round and that put me two strokes out of cash, but I wanted to get going before the rain goes, so I didn't want to take a picture just yet, so, but, anywho, learning experience for sanction tournament of the year. Um, I could definitely do better. You know, last year I played this in rec and I don't even think I cashed in rec last year. So, you know, I middle of the pack. I'm okay with that. I uh, got a lot of learning to do still. And, you know, I got to clean up some stuff and make sure that my, my head game is, is strong. So, until uh, next time. All right, guys, as you can see, I kind of didn't finish the way I wanted to. I said I wanted to be top four. I'd be happy with that. But ultimately, I'm just happy that I got to enjoy the rounds and at least I got to participate. When I'm talking about, you know, the not the right headspace, right? That's what one throw at a time, one round at a time actually means, okay? And I've kind of, I guess, developed that mentality before disc golf before I started doing disc golf or, or participating in disc golf. Um, you know, there's been several famous people out there that have said, you know, a journey starts with one step and that you can only take life, um, you know, you can only play the cards that life dealt you. And it's kind of what one throw at a time and one round at a time means. All right, when, when I joined the Marine Corps um, right out of high school, of course, I went to boot camp, all right? And it was one of the most challenging things in my life. And it's not really like the physicality of boot camp. It was physical, don't get me wrong, it put me in shape. I was in way better shape than I am right now. But it was more the mental aspect of boot camp that really drains on you and messes with you. So during that time, uh, we were doing our, our hikes during second phase, and I could see that other Marines around me or other recruits around me were already defeating themselves before we took that first step to head towards the hike, right? To head to, to, to whatever distance we're going. And I saw this constantly throughout the Marine Corps where guys would, would, who were tired or just didn't want to do something were, were defeating themselves mentally before we were even you know, partaking in the activity that we're doing, whether it was any physical fitness test that we were doing or any, uh, we call them humps, or which are the hikes or, or, or just really anything. Like even going to a PowerPoint, defeating themselves. I don't want to be here, this sucks, all that stuff. And the mental game period is what separates you from the pack, right? If you look at say Paul Macbeth or Paul Uliberry or or Ben Calloway or Austin Turner, anybody on Team Discraft, um, which I can say now, Paul Hilleberry and Paul, and, and Paul McBeth, but their mental game is strong. They don't really let the mistakes that they make affect them. They just move on to the next hole and they continue to try to, to you know, play the hole to the best that they can, right? That's why, you know, the top five disc golf players in the world are the top five because their mental game is strong. 
not letting the small mistakes kind of determine their round. They're just like, okay, that's that hole, I need to move on. Uh, going back to boot camp, right, on my hikes and stuff like that, even though I was tired physically and mentally, I always kept telling myself just one step at a time. And once I got through that step, I'd say one more step, okay, one more step. And eventually I got to the end of the time, at the end of the hike, you know, and the same thing goes with boot camp, right? One more day, one more hour, whatever. Let me make it through this. Okay, if I made it through this, now I can make it through the next hour. I can make it through the next minute or second or whatever. However you want to break it down. And ultimately, again, that is what one round at a time, one throw at a time means. Or one throw at a time, one round at a time, right? If I can make it through this throw, I can make it through the next. All right? Now, I, I can't change what I just did, right? I, I, drive, off, I drive off the tee and I hit, hit a tree. Okay, I can't change that. I'm not in a sanctioned round, not even really in the casual round. Right? I can't change that right now. So how do I still accomplish my goal on this hole? How do I still achieve at this point a par or maybe even a boat, not a bogey, but a birdie if I can? So that's ultimately what I mean when I say one round at a time, one throw at a time. You gotta think of it like that, okay? Now, during the tournament, my mental game got thrown. Right? Well, that's something disturbed me that really shouldn't have disturbed me. I let somebody cussing and distracting me as I was putting throw my game off so much that it cost me literally two extra strokes or three extra strokes than what I should have taken. And that is the difference of me cashing and me not cashing. Right? If I just didn't let the disturbance uh, irritate me after I missed my putt, I could have still walk away with a par on that hole, which still would have put me relatively close to cashing. And then I could have gone to the next hole and either play, try to play the two, and if I don't get it, get a par, and it still puts me in cash. But because I let it disturb me and I picked two extra strokes up in, two, in the two of the last holes, I ultimately was not able to cash. And again, that is my fault. I didn't pay attention to my mantra, right, or my motto, or, or, or my saying, or whatever you want to say it is. And ultimately, again, you know, it cost me the, the small goal that I wanted, which was at least casual. Okay, and some of the things I could have changed during the round, or at least before the round, I could have, you know, stretched. I could have probably practiced my putts a little bit better. I could have probably definitely paid attention more to the wind uh, during the round. I, my disc selection was more of, okay, I'm in an open field, and I want something that I know that I can throw a good distance and be able to, to kind of like take a huge chunk off of some of these holes. And because of that and that mentality, right, I wasn't attacking the holes or throwing the holes in a smart way either. I wasn't paying attention to the wind and how it was affecting my discs or other people's discs. I was like, you know what, the wind's not there, let me just throw this and see how it goes. And ultimately, I, again, I paid for it. I, I said it in there, right? The second round, what happened was, is I was like, okay, well, these are what these are the holes I need to attack better, or at least uh, throw better. So these are the discs I'm going to throw on it because of the wind or because of uh, whatever situation I was in. And, and I need to stick with those, you know, discs. But the discs I did well on, or the, not the disc, sorry, the holes that I did well on in uh, the first round, I should have used those discs that I used the first round on, on the second round. But because I wanted to kind of push it a little bit more, maybe attack a little bit more on these holes, or maybe take a slightly different line that I think that, or that I thought would get me in a little bit better position, I chose a different disc and ultimately that's another reason why it cost me the tournament, right? I should have stuck with the same disc that threw the first round and I would have been okay. I, I, I probably would have cash. I could have probably put together a good second round and maybe moved up a couple of slots. But because I didn't do that and I decided that I wanted to change my game plan mid-tournament, it cost me. And I've noticed myself doing that uh, last year, my tournaments where we played the same uh, course two times in a row, I'd use it. On some holes, I'd use the exact same disc, and on other holes, I'd use a different disc. 
that I used the first round and you know I ultimately paid for that so another thing I got to remember is all right go through the first round and the discs that you use that you threw well on these holes remember to use them on the second round all right guys if you like what I'm doing here please hit that like button if you're new here hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when I upload my next video and down below comment oh, when was your first or second tournament? Why did you get into disc golf? And how do you um, react to a distraction during a tournament or during the cash round? Um, as always, remember, one throw at a time, one round at a time. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy. Uh, and I'll be uploading another uh, review uh, video next week. It probably will be the Punisher. I'm not sure yet. But I'll let you guys know. Thank you.